Hello, my name is Amory Duffy. I'm a Principal Product Success Architect with ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to configure the Dynetrace Service Graph Connector. So the agenda. I'm going to be talking about what Dynetrace is, what's the Service Graph Connector for Dynetrace, what that is. I'm going to be giving a demo on how to configure the Service Graph Connector for Dynetrace and I'll be wrapping up with a summary. So first of all, what is Dynetrace? Dynetrace is a, cl a cloud-based observability solution that's used for monitoring an enterprise's applications and infrastructure. It captures an application's <coughs> topology and events associated with the application components and infrastructure in this topology on a real-time basis. On the right-hand side, what I'm showing is the Dynetrace Smartscape topology screen, where it's showing the MediaWiki application I tested with. It's a two-tier application that's consisted of a web, an Apache web server tier layer that connects to a MySQL server database. So what is the Service Graph Connector for Dynetrace? It's an ingestion tool for ingesting application component and infrastructure data from Dynetrace and populating CNDB with this data in your ServiceNow instance on a scheduled basis. It also supports the consumption of Dynetrace events into your ServiceNow instance real time if you have the observability components framework installed. So now for the demo. So what I'm showing here on the screen is the guided setup for the Service Graph connector itself. What I want to call out here first that's important is if you intend to use the um, event management section of the Service Graph connector where you in, in, ingest Dynatrace events, it's very important that you install the Observability Commons framework first before you install the Dynatrace Service Graph connector. And I'll <coughs> call this out as, as I'm going through this uh, demo. So I've already installed the Observability Commons framework and the Dynatrace Service Graph connector. So I, I am now in guided setup. Um, and, and basically how you get to guided setup is you type in Dynatrace after it's installed. And you just go to setup, very straightforward. So you click on continue. And I've already done some of these steps but I just wanted to walk through them. The first step here is really, it's just, it's about copying um, uh, the, an impact manager script that's needed for calculating um, impacts values for clusters in your service map that you need to copy to your globe scope. This is very straightforward. The next section is the basic section, which is around setting up your configuration. So the first step here is where you copy a Dynatrace API key you've already set up in Dynatrace into the API key field. And this is needed uh, for connecting to Dynatrace. Okay. The next step here is where you set up the host, like the Dynatrace URL um, for the host in the host field. And this is needed, you know, so ServiceNow knows what URL to go to to get to connect to Dynatrace. And this case is what we're using. The then here, this is just a step for testing the connection. This will flush out any issues you have with permissions or. Um, the URL or, you know, maybe you're using the wrong API key, it'll fail, um, but, you know, this, this allows you to test that. This is a step that you'll only see if you've already installed Observability Commons, your Observability Commons framework. And well, I just want to call out here that these are the permissions you have, will have already need to have assigned to the access key in Dynatrace before you go to this. And it's needed for um, getting access to allow serves now to get access to the dying trace logs and, and metrics. <clears throat> the upgrade source native keys, that's only really needed if you're upgrading from an older version of dying trace prior to 1.5s so around upgrading the, the service source native keys. I won't go through that. This step I will call out, it's a new step that was added to the 1.9 version of dying trace. Service Graph Connector, and it's for Dynatrace customers that have Grail enabled in their Dynatrace instance, and they'll need to create a new OAuth client credentials connection that ServiceNow will use for connected Dynatrace to get this Grail data. The next step here is advanced. This, the first piece is for advanced settings. And if you want to go ahead and change the out of the box settings that ServiceNow has already given for these properties, you can go and do this. For example, the page size for the, that's used for the REST calls to get Dynatrace entities. Configure instance settings. This step is important. I want to spend just a few minutes talking on the service types uh, field here, property. <coughs> um, out of the box, this comes a custom service database service web service. I've added in web request service for our application uh, because I need to be able to track the web requests that are going through our HA proxy into 
or Apache Web Service. If I don't put this in, it won't bring in the Apache Web Server requests. And this you can look up in a white paper I'll talk to later at the end of this video. Um, so that's what I did for our instance. The next one here is tags. This is important. It allows us to filter the applications that we ingest from Dynetrace. If you don't do this, um, like for example, I put in application media wiki here saying I only really want to bring in the data associated with our media wiki application. Some customers have thousands of applications set up in their Dynetrace instance. If you don't try and filter using tags, then you bring in all applications, which is almost information overload. And it's very hard to, to siphon through that. The last one here, configure problem notification. This really is if you want to change out of the box, you just click on problem notification setup uh, in the basic section and it'll send the metadata to Dynatrace. But if you wanted to after the fact change maybe and use a different uh, problem notification setup in Dynatrace or a different profile, you can go and do this here. If you, if you click on fetch notification options, what that'll do is it'll bring all your options from Dynatrace will bring the current Dynatrace profiles and notifications that are stored in Dynatrace and the management zones. And then you can then use these lookup magnifiers to, to select the notification profile or management zone you want. Um, that, that I haven't used, but some customers, you may need to do that after the fact, after your installation. Add multiple instances. That's if, if for example, if you have more than one instance that you, Dynatrace instance that you want to connect to, you can create a new um, a connection for connect to that new extra Dynatrace instance. And I won't go through all this, but these are all the steps here, similar to what we've done before for creating the basic setup. Um, lastly, then, is um, setting up the scheduled jobs. So here is, it's all about basically going in. And um, I, I've already done this, so you don't see it. But in your case, you would see the parent job scheduled, the host parent job, you go in, you turn that as active and you click on execute uh, to show um, the job, the, the, the host job will then kick off. And then what you do then is you go to concurrent in process to see did that job run, right? So in my case, because I kicked this off earlier, I can see that yes, the host job ran and it showed processes are successful and all the child jobs ran, right? Processes, group, process group services, applications. Um, so, so just to wrap up what we covered today, uh, the summary, um, we reviewed what Dynatrace is, we reviewed what the service graph connector for observability Dynatrace is, and I demonstrated how to configure the service graph connector for observability Dynatrace um, in your instance. And lastly, for more information, I'm including a link to the ServiceNow Dynatrace documentation page and a Dynatrace service graph connector that I wrote that you can read in your own time. Thank you.